For part two, we'll be recalculating the biophysical parameters for the entire season. We will be doing this by using the graph builder, though it's still possible to do it as shown in part A. Before we start on the calculations, let's quickly check the natural color and false infrared images of our study site to see how it changes throughout time. This might help you figure out what is happening when we derive the biophysical parameters for the season. First, we'll open up the Graph Builder. Right-click and navigate to BandMaths under Raster. Hover on the right side of the Read block until a red arrow appears, then drag it, that over to BandMaths, and then once again from BandMaths to Write. In the bottom tabs, you can fill in the Source product in Read, the Target product in Write, and the Expression in BandMaths. In Write, you have to navigate to where you'd like to save your end product. In band maths, you can add the equation for WDVI, then save your graph and run. This might take a couple of seconds. We'll repeat these steps for the rest of the dates, updating the name of the band and the output each time. Note that I'm fast forwarding through these steps as it might not be the most interesting material to watch, but the process is still the same for all of the dates. Once you finish with all of the dates, we need to collocate them into a single raster stack. This will allow us to view the WDVI values for an entire season while hovering over one pixel. To do this, we will go to Raster, Geometric, Collocation. Add all of the WDVI bands we just created. Change the name to something like 2016 WDVI season. Make sure your directory is set to the right place. You can leave the rest of the settings as default and then click run. Now let's open up the WDVI files for the season. You should see the bands and the collocation flex. Do a quick visual inspection of all the layers first, and then open up the pixel info to view the pixel values for all the layers. At this point, I would add some pins. This makes it easier to find the same points in the rest of the biophysical parameters. By clicking on the pins, you can get pixel information for that specific pin. If this isn't the case, click Snap to Selected Pin in the pixel window page. You can change the pin information, such as the name and color. This will be helpful to us later.
So far, we've added pins for the dark and bright pixel. Let's add some more pins for water and the farmhouse. On the right panel, you can click to save them as well, as we'll be using them in the future bicycle parameters. Seeing the WDVI values in a table is a good first step, but let's take this further and create a graph for the four pixels throughout time. First, right-click the pixel and select Copy Pixel Info to Clipboard. Then open up Excel or a similar program and paste the copied data. We'll have to do a bit of cleanup initially so that the only information left are the pixel values and dates. Rename the values column with the type of pixel you have, whether it's dark, water, forest, or light. Delete any unnecessary lines. A trick I use to get the dates column is from the names. Go to text to columns, have the underscore as the delimiter, then check that the column is a type date with year, month, and day as the format. You now have the dates. I then select all the data, go to Insert, add a line chart. You can now see the WDVI over the season. Looking at this chart, how would you explain the differences throughout the season for the different pixels? We'll now continue these steps for the other biophysical parameters, starting with LAI. We'll start with the WDVI graph and change it to calculate LAI instead. Save this as well. Then we'll repeat the steps with the rest of the images and finally collocate them.
Once all the images are collocated and opened, it's time to upload the pins we just created. We can now easily zoom to our points of interest and get the pixel info. I'll fast forward through this next bit as it's the same procedure as you did for WDVI. Before we begin interpreting these values, it's important to remember that the calibration line for this exercise is derived for an LAI range between 2 to 5, meaning that LAI estimates outside of this range may not be accurate in this exercise due to extrapolation errors. For CVI, we'll once again start with a graph from WDVI, but of course, change the equation to match that of CVI. We'll adjust the name for each layer, run through the steps, and then collocate the CVI bands together. Next, time to open up all the bands and import the pins. See if you can explain why the images look the way they do.
Zooming into the pixels, we can export the pixel data to our Excel sheet and create the seasonal chart. The LCC follows the same process as previously described. Run the images through the graph builder, renaming each layer with a biophysical parameter and the date. Then collocate them, do a visual assessment, and finally export the pixel values to Excel. The final chart should look something like this. How would you explain the pixel from the potato field? What do the house and water pixels tell you about the use of LCC on non-vegetation? The canopy chlorophyll content, CCC, is the last of the biophysical parameters covered. We'll continue with the same workflow as previously introduced. You should be able to complete these steps without looking at the tutorial, but if you have any trouble, look back at the steps for WDVI and apply them to CCC.
Finally, you will get a graph with the canopy chlorophyll content for the season. Reflect on these values.